Okay, so let's unpack relays. Relays are pretty cool little things. They're almost like kind of remote control things in that remotely is the concept of controlling current with current in that you can control maybe a high current with a low current and also you can control different voltages with different voltages. So relays are pretty cool. They're remote little things where we can have one input of kind of a different voltage or a different current controlling another output of a different voltage or a different current. Relays have way more capabilities than actually just controlling either one voltage with another voltage or one current with another current. They also can reverse logic. Yeah, they multiply our signal. Really cool. So if we have like one button, we can control four different things. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so not only can we reverse logic, but we can kind of kind of put a, a feedback loop into a relay and actually make kind of a memory latch. Yeah, and we can actually make a one-bit computer with a relay. It's pretty cool. We can um, do counters with relays. We can do memory latches with relays. We can do a lot of really cool things. So relays allow us to put logic into our circuits. Plus, they allow us to control higher voltage with lower voltage. So there's a lot of really cool things about a relay. Let's just kind of take a look at what the relays look in the Humber lab and kind of unpack what all the, the contacts are. So here we go. Essentially, a relay is a coil, it's an electromagnet, and when the electromagnet energizes, it actually turns a switch on and off. Imagine a switch in your head, just a, just a switch on the wall. So if you could then somehow control that switch, not with your finger, but with a, a solenoid, that'd be pretty cool, and then you could send an electrical signal to the solenoid, which would move the switch, and then you would be controlling, say, a lamp or a light or some anything that's connected to the switch that's of maybe 110 volts of maybe a higher current like three or four amps with maybe a doorbell. Yeah, you could run a doorbell, just a little button doorbell running on six volts controlling a six volt solenoid that's actually moving the switch for you. You've just built your own relay. So here we go here. We've got this coil right in here that's actually just an electromagnet that's actually just moving some contacts inside which are like that switch, that single pole, single throw switch. Um, uh, I shouldn't have said that. A single pole, single fold switch is okay for a kind of analyzing the concept of this switch in your mind going up and down. But really what we have in here is we have normally something contacts. Single pole, single throw switch can be left one way or the other. In here, these contacts have a normal state because they have springs in them. Yeah, springs. So essentially what's going on here is that's why we have this N concept here. So what's happening is that when I energize my coil, this contact in here, there are four contacts on the Humber relays that we have in the lab. This contact here, it actually switches its state and it goes into an active state. It's no longer in its normal state. Let me draw something on the board here. I'm actually gonna do, um, I'm going to put something together here where I'm going to run power, I'm going to run power down into my common. So this is the symbol for the common which we'll unpack in a second, but I'm running it into the common. So here's a contact in here. It's its own switch. It's not actually connected to this contact, contact 4 or contact 3 or contact 2. They're entirely separated from each other. They don't even know that the others exist. They're not electrically connected in any way. They're completely isolated. So what's going on here is that I'm running power into my common. I'm going to take it out of my normally open and I'm going to run it into a lamp. Okay, cool. Now I'm actually just going to ground my lamp and I'm going to ground this. So let's say that's 12 volts. Okay, so now if I don't do anything to the coil, the light's not going to come on because it's connected to the normally open. So normally, the normally open contact is open because it's a normally open contact. Yeah. So it either a normally open contact can either be closed or open, but always it's called a normally open contact. It doesn't become normally closed, it just becomes closed when we activate it. Okay, with that thought, let's actually activate the coil. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a normally open push button here, and I'm gonna run that actually right to here. So I've got 12 volts here. Just I'm gonna just kind of kind of draw through my symbols here. I'm gonna go up to my coil, and I'm gonna ground my coil. Now, when I press this button, Current then goes from here, it goes into the coil, and then it activates the coil. The electromagnet comes on, and it changes the contacts 
in here, it, it switches them. It changes them from, it changes the, the connection between the common and the normally open. It, it makes them connect. Now, the other thing is that the connection between the common and normally closed is normally closed. Yeah, because it's a normally closed contact. So normally it's closed. So if I were to actually connect my lamp over to here, I'm going to connect my lamp to my normally closed now. Now, if I do not press that button, that lamp is on. Yeah, because it's connected to the normally closed contact, and the normally closed is in its normal state, so therefore it's closed. Yeah, it's not normally closed, it's closed. Now, as soon as I press this button, the normally closed contact goes into its active state, so it's no longer in its normal state, so it's not closed, it's open. Yeah, so if I were to press this, this light would actually go off. Hmm. So, this is what's going on here with these contacts. Now, you can actually only use one of these contacts. You can either use the normally open or the normally closed. But generally, that's what we do. Sometimes you can actually kind of wire them backwards and do really cool funky things, which we'll talk about way later. But for now, I need you to use one or the other, and that's it, not both. Now, let's actually talk about these contacts here. So what do these symbols mean? Well, these are our contact symbols for our normally open or normally closed. So this guy is a normally open, and that guy is a normally closed. So we draw these in our ladder logic, but just want to say that this side is the common, and that side is the normally open. So I'm actually going to write that there. That's the common, and that's the normally open. That's the common, and that's the normally closed. So every contact has a kind of two sides to it. It's got one side, which is the common, and the other side, which is the normally open or the normally closed. So this here, these two represent that little bunch right there, okay? So this little bunch here, that common is this common. That normally open is there, and that normally closed is here. Essentially, what's going on is these are actually connected. You can either use this one, or you can use this one. Generally, we don't use both. Not at this time, anyway. So, there you go. I think we're good. Let's actually apply this and put this into a ladder logic and see what happens.